Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. I am Dawn Chase, and I am the owner of Creative Appliques, and I'm so excited to have you join me this morning. We have a wonderful show planned for you today, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've seen all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, Etsy, lots of places where people are stitching for back to school. It's that time already. I can't believe it's already that time of year. And I have seen everything being monogrammed. We've always seen backpacks and lunch boxes, correct? But now I've seen other things like, you know, plastic folders and plastic zippered tote bags. And so I thought it would be really fun to connect with you today and talk to you a little bit about it and how I've done it. And it's perfect because I had a brand new sketch font that came out this past week, and that's the perfect type of font to stitch on it. So let me see what you're checking in from, have, how everybody's doing. Are you staying cool? What are you up to this summer? I can't believe tomorrow is August 1st. Where has the summer gone? How has your summer been? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to know where everybody's checking in from and give everybody a few more minutes to, to join us. We have so many people here today. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Good morning, Janet from Georgia. And we have Luann from Alabama and West Virginia. Hello, hello. Missouri, Mississippi, Texas. Yay, Mary, I agree, I agree. Good morning from Delaware and Arkansas, North Central Minnesota. Hello, thank you for being here. Looking forward to the video. Thank you, Jill, I appreciate that. I know it was kind of last minute, but you know, hashtag summer, right? I have both my girls home here from, uh, one from college, one from high school, and everybody's running different directions. And so it's been a bit crazy, so I thought, while I have the opportunity to throw in this quick live, I will do that because I miss connecting with you and I wanted to do this. So we've got Ohio and New Jersey and Chesapeake, Virginia. Hey, Jill, you're my neighbor, not too far away from me. Betsy's from Virginia, Texas, Michigan. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for watching live and also for catching the replay. So one of the things that if you're new and you haven't joined me before is i always do a giveaway during the live and today i'm actually going to give away two prizes so the first prize i'm going to give away is the new uh font we have that is it's an exclusive creative applique font and it's called good morning gorgeous isn't that perfect for today but i did it in a gradient uh fill and so you will see when we stitch it out how it goes you could essentially do it all in one color if you wish. You could do it in two colors where the center is a single color and the outline is a separate color, or you can do it in three colors as it's digitized and you'll see when we stitch it out. So the one of the prizes, the first person will win the font. And then the second prize I always give is a $20 uh, store credit to my website. So make sure that you post in the comments, hashtag creative, no space, no appliques, no applique, hashtag creative. It has to be exactly like that in order for it to be entered into the giveaway. So thanks for watching. That's one of my little treats for watching me live because the hashtag creative, the giveaway only works for the live. So let's see. And if you see, um, also make sure that you post your comments and your questions down below if you have anything so that I know what you want to um, have me address during this live for this presentation. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the video and also give it a thumbs up, like the video, so I know that you enjoy the content and it also helps other people see the content as well. And the more people know and we get the word out, the more I'm inclined to do live videos. All right, so let's see what else we got going here. Oh, I didn't even ask. I'm assuming you can hear me, right? Because I've been chattering on now for six minutes and I... I think you can all uh, hear what I'm saying. So let's get started here with a few other things. Yay, Bonnie, she loves prizes. Awesome. I love prizes too. So make sure you put that hashtag creative in to be able to enter into the giveaway. So let's see. Let's see what's next on the list here. 
So make sure you like, if you're on Facebook, like the video. Also make sure you are following my page on Facebook. I also have a fan group, uh, Creative Applicates Embroidery Fans is the group and you could join there as well. We'd love to have you. We share discount codes and sales. We have giveaways there. We share our projects using Creative Applicate Design. So that's a lot of fun to see what everybody's doing because you know I love creating all these fun designs, but I also love to see what you've done with the designs as well. So the creativity is amazing and I love to see it. So please join us in the Facebook group, Creative Applicates Embroidery Fans Facebook group, and uh, come share your projects with us and get inspiration and you know, I have lots of polls going on in there about what lives you want me to do, what videos you want to see, because not only do I do these live videos once a month on a current hot topic or item that you want to uh, see and learn how to digitize, uh, not digitize, learn how to stitch and also interact with me. If you have questions about how to do a certain project, it, I also upload videos a couple times a month to my YouTube channel. So if you didn't know that, I do have a YouTube channel and it is growing rapidly. So I'm so excited about that. But share with your sewing friends, too, if you are in quilting clubs or if you're in embroidery clubs or you go to your local quilt shop, please share the info there so that we can get the word out even better. So let's go on now. We talked about the giveaways. And so I wanted to talk about upcoming events and another reason why to join the Facebook group and follow my Facebook page is because I'm very active on my Facebook page. I post designs, I post giveaways, and I also post upcoming events. And so I'm not sure if you saw, but I have an upcoming event coming up on, let me share this with you on August 25th, so at 11 a.m. Central Time, and it is in collaboration with Dime, Designs and Machine Embroidery, and we are going to, they're going to teach you how to use this new software that they have and how to also use heat transfer vinyl along with your embroidery. So it is a powerhouse, amazing, jam-packed 90 minutes of learning about how to use heat transfer vinyl and rhinestones and and adding wording design, adding words uh, on your designs and mixing it up. So making, you know, maybe making a heat transfer vinyl design or, you know, like a logo or something like that, and then embroidering words around it and then putting rhinestones all around that. It is amazing. I have watched so many of them and I learn something new every time. My good friend Ashley Jones is going to be presenting that day and she is absolutely amazing. If you haven't watched her, her, uh, software success over on designs and machine embroidery. You want to catch her every other Tuesday because she's absolutely amazing. So um, let me get you the link for registering for that. It is not a Facebook live event. So there is an event that it shows on Facebook. However, it is not an actual event on Facebook. You must pre-register for the event. Um, let me know if any of you have joined in on some of these. Um, I'm trying to find the link and I have it right there. Sorry, guys. Uh, if you anybody has has joined in on any of these events. Also, it's it's called a shop and learn event, which means you they have savings, crazy discounts and savings on the items that they use um, during the actual
comment um, on there as well. And if you, when you go to Facebook, you can click on my events. That's one of my events that shows on Facebook, but then you click on that link in the event to register for it. So that way you receive emails and they'll also give you a free design. Um, it's a, a cute little, I think it's a four layer ice cream cone that you could do it in embroidery and you could use it as a regular applique, but it looks amazing when you partner it with the heat transfer vinyl. So that's coming up. And then also, um, oh, Betsy, my sound is off on your end. I'm not sure. Is anyone else having issues with, uh, the sound? Hey, Sheila, thanks for joining me today. Um, you lost okay so i am is anybody else having issues with hearing me two people said they're not hearing me now and saying my sound is off it's back okay it's back on okay awesome awesome all right perfect all right so um yes that event is august 25th you must register for it it is not a facebook live so um and i've also been sending it out in my newsletters as well as posting it on facebook as well but you're going to want to join because there's discounts and it's a shop and learn event you can uh have so, um a di they mark down a lot of the pro all the prices for the items that they're talking about in the video are marked down. So that's another reason why it's awesome to also be able to, um, okay, sorry. So I'm, I see a, a, a pop-up here saying they're having trouble streaming to Facebook. It may be an issue on Facebook um, and, uh, okay, so, let me see really quickly if I can see what's going on here. Uh, if for those people, if you're on Facebook, you can also come back um, and watch on um, YouTube, streaming on YouTube. Okay. So Lori is in Vancouver, Canada. Hello, Lori. I am going to be in uh, Vancouver later this week. I'm so excited. All right. So the event on August 25th, and then I will be having an event coming up um, mid to late August around maybe the 22nd or I usually do them on a Tuesday. This was on a Monday because I will be traveling the next 10 days. And so I wanted to get this in before July, but mid to late August, I will have another one. So watch for my newsletter, watch uh, the Facebook page and you'll be alerted to when <clears throat> there is the next one. All right. So let me share with you the some other little things little housekeeping things that i want to share is all right let me share let's see okay so here we are um we have a uh, satin stitch finish, a fill stitch, and a sketch stitch. And you could buy them in a set as well. And so those I'm excited about releasing uh, later today and tomorrow. So keep in touch about that. And the next thing I want to show you is the fonts that we're going to be using today in the stitching. So here on my website, if you go to fonts, I have a section here for sketch stitch fonts. Now, these are the type of fonts that are going to be the best type of fonts to stitch on the plastic folders. The reason being is they're not going to be as tight um, as a stitch and therefore puncturing and cutting through the plastic uh, folder. So a sketch stitch like these are really good. We have a bunch of sketch stitch fonts here you can see. 
We even have the four letter monogram uh, in the sketch stitch. So these are awesome to use on the folders. The other type of font that's really good to use too are the floss stitch or the vintage stitch. So something that is more of a simple running stitch, these types of fonts are really good to use as well. So that's what works really well on the folders uh, while you're stitching on those. So lost audio again happening when you share the screen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ruth, for letting me know. Okay. So let me go back and share the screen and see if you can um, hear me. Let me know if you can still hear me now. Um, so these are the floss stitch fonts that are really good to use on the folders. They are a running stitch or a bean stitch, a triple running stitch. These are good to use on uh, the plastic folders. How is the, how is the volume back? Um, okay, Ruth, thank you. Uh, so make sure, let me know if you've lost the, the volume again, because I'm trying to, I guess when I switch it, it, it gets rid of my talking. Uh, all right, so the other type of font that's really good to use for these folders are the sketch stitch fonts, these here. And so they're not a solid fill stitch. They're, they are a little bit more open and they have uh, they allow the item to show through. So they're not as dense. They have more um, space between the stitching. So it is better to stitch something like that on the plastic folders because of the fact that you are not making as many holes and therefore puncturing the vinyl. So here's the new one that we released, I released last week. Um, and it is an exclusive creative applique font. And now if you can see here how it looks like it's in two different colors, three different colors actually, like this is kind of a yellow and then a purple and outlined in a black. This is digitized so that it looks like it's variegated thread, but it's not variegated thread. And the reason being is if you used a variegated thread, you're not going to get this seamless, consistent look with all of the letters. You, it would be more sporadic because of the distance of how, how closely the letters or the different colors of the variegated thread are spaced out. And so when you have a, a font that is variegated like this, it, it, it allows for more consistency. So we're going to stitch it out today to show you how it um, is variegated or sorry, not variegated, how it gives you that look. It's like an ombre look, um, but you definitely could stitch it in uh, one color if you wish, or two colors or three. So that's the font that we're going to be using today. Okay. Yes, Debbie, thank you for joining me on YouTube. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. StreamYard said that they were having an issue um, sharing it to Facebook. So I'm not really sure what happened there. And um, I, you know, and I, I didn't, it's just me here. So I don't have time to, you know, go over there and, and troubleshoot it. So thank you so much for seeking me out on YouTube. I appreciate it. Um, so there you go. All right, so now let me see. So let's talk about the supplies we will need for this project. So here's the folder that I stitched on and it's just, it's kind of a flimsy plastic folder. Uh, I bought this one from Walmart. I know Target has them. They also have them in, um, on Amazon as well. I don't have a link for that. So this is the folder and we're going to talk about how to hoop this. All right. And we talked about the fonts already. So we know floss stitch, bean stitch, running stitch, sketch stitch. Some people call it scribble are all really perfect for stitching on this. You want something that's kind of light and airy, not something super dense. Uh, satin stitch is not going to work really well. Uh, I encourage you to try it, but do it as a test stitch, not something that, you know, is going to be your final end product, especially if you're selling to someone. 
but uh, something that's light and airy works great. So this is, uh, so you need a folder. All right, so now we'll go through the supplies. You can use a regular hoop, your regular hoop on your embroidery machine. And obviously we're going to be floating the folder. We are not gonna be hooping the folder. We're not gonna take the folder and put it between the uh, pieces of you know the, the upper and lower hoop because I, that's just gonna create so much I don't need, it's not even going to be called hoop burn at that point because you're going to have creased the, the folder and created, you know, a lot of um, creases and ridges and edges on the folder. So you could definitely use your regular hoop. You can hoop some tearaway stabilizer or some sticky stabilizer. Just if you hoop the sticky stabilizer, you want to leave the paper on the hoop and hoop the stabilizer with the paper on it. And then once you have it so that the sticky side is up, you will then score it with a pin and then pull off the paper part and then put down the uh, folder on top of that. It is possible to do that. The other thing though, is when you float like that, a lot of times when I float like that, or if I use just tear away and I use like a spray adhesive, I also pin it, but you're not going to be able to pin through this, this uh, folder without leaving holes in it. So I feel like sticky tear away or sticky wash away is great too. So that's the regular hoop. You can also use what's called the sticky hoop. Now this is um, Dimes Sticky Hoop, and what it is, is it's just a single hoop here, and you would put uh, the sticky stabilizer, easier for you to see this way, you put the sticky stabilizer um, with sticky side up, you would take, take the paper off the stabilizer, st stick the stabilizer on the back side here of the hoop, and then you would have the sticky side exposed, and then you would put the folder right down onto the sticky stabilizer. That is how I did it. And um, actually, I used sticky stabilizer, but I also used it in the, mag the magnetic hoop, and I'll show you why. Because you also have to be careful that your um, that it stays stuck to the stabilizer and doesn't move around. The other option is too, you could stick it to the stabilizer like this and then get some masking tape. Where's my end? I always know where the end is until you And then tape it down to parts of the stabilizer as well. So that is another option as well. That would work too for your regular hoop if you're doing um, tear away stabilizer and adhesive, hoop it a little bit lower, and then you can kind of tape it to the stabilizer. So those are some options there that I wanted to share with you. What I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using my Dime Snap Hoop Monster. This is a magnetic hoop that is so powerful. The magnets on this thing are so powerful and strong. And I basically took here, and I didn't need to do this, but I was playing around. So I took actually sticky stabilizer and I taped it. You want to make sure you don't tape on these little felt parts here, but I taped it to the hoop. And then I scored it with the pin. And now you can see here, I pull off the paper. Okay. And then we'll put down the folder when we are ready to do that all right so in a minute we will do that so you need a hoop somehow i don't whichever one you wish i love this one yes patricia i love my monster hoops too uh let me get the link for that because i see some people asking for the links so this one is the magnetic hoop um, that's this one that has the top and the bottom with the magnets on it. And then there is also, oh, did I not get it? They also have a, a sticky, a sticky hoop is what they call it. 
And that is for, that's just the single one. Um, but if you use that link to go to the Snap Hoop Monster, you can, um, you can also use that one. Okay, so, sorry, guys. It's, I have a hard time reading and trying to talk at the same time. I get, it gets hard. Okay. So you're going to want to have a ruler to mark, you know, measure uh, your folder. So this is the folder we're going to be stitching on today. Uh, so you're going to want a, a ruler to figure out where you're marking a marking pen. This uh, here is really good. This hook, I buy them in a set of four. You can get them at Harbor Freight. You can also get them at um, on Amazon or Home Depot in the tool section. It comes in a pack of four. But this is great with helping to get rid of the stabilizer, especially in the parts like here. Okay. Um, and so you see here I use regular tearaway stabilizer and i wanted to talk about the bobbin so i didn't really care that this is white on the back i just used a regular embroidery bobbin white thread and to me it didn't bother me that it's white this is mine i'm gonna have papers in here i don't care about that but if you wanted to you could use a bobbin that is the same color as the folder you're stitching on so that it doesn't stand out as much. So that's the preference. If you wish to do that, you can. That's just a, you know, an option. Um, some scissors that you're going to want to trim threads if you need to and other things. Um, and then obviously your embroidery thread, your spray adhesive, if you are using just a regular like tearaway and then some masking tape if you need to tape it to the stabilizer. So now let me know if you have any questions. I, I haven't seen any questions yet. Um, and so I want to make sure that if you've got questions uh, to let me know. Okay, so Denise says, can you do a video or tutorial on how to bring in fonts as an alphabet, not as one letter at a time? Denise, if you use Imbrilliance software, you can bring in what's called the BX format of the um, file and load it into the Imbrilliance software. And then you can uh, be able to use your computer keyboard to type out the letters. But that's for a, a different, uh, different time. Uh, send me an email. Uh, through the, my website after the broadcast, Denise, and um, I will. I have a blog post on my website that talks about why I love the um, Embrilliance and BX format so you can type out the letters on your computer keyboard. I'm not sure if there's other softwares that do that. I just know that Embrilliance is the one that that does do that. Uh, so does the sticky stabilizer leave a residue on the folder? Um, it depends on the brand, Kaylee. You know, that's one of the reasons why I suggest that you do a test first. But one of the other types of um, stabilizer that is awesome to use is a sticky wash away. And since these are plastic folders, you can you can stick them in water and be able to rinse it away. Uh, so that's one thing that I would, I really like is the sticky wash away as well. Um, it, it might leave a residue, but it's, again, it's going to depend on the brand and you're not going to want to let your, the folder sit on the stabilizer for a long period of time. Like right now, that's why I didn't even hoop it before I started the, with you guys, because I want to just essentially stick it on there, stitch it and immediately tear it off. So the other thing is, thank you for reminding me, Lu Luann, I always forget to talk about the needle, but I'm using a 7511 and I'm not using a sharp needle. I'm using a, um, a ballpoint or Jersey needle so that it is not so sharp that it's cutting through the actual folder. All right. So the font that I'm using today is going to be, um, let me see. 
or maybe do tear away with the sewable adhesive spray and then if any residue might remove with alcohol i would be cautious uh yes lauren that's an awesome idea have you tried that yourself um i'd be cautious of the alcohol because sometimes it can you know remove finishes off of things and so i don't know like sometimes when i've used alcohol on plastic things it makes the plastic then sticky because it it removes the the finish off of things so um yes that's that's a great idea oh the res okay the residue from the spray yes 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 um what would does anybody know what this tool is called to me, it's like it's a it's a hook tool. I think it's like they're for like O ring pick tools or something like that. They're called, but this is I use this to remove wash away stabilizer on top and tear away stabilizer in areas. It's it's amazing. Judy, make sure you do hashtag creative. No appliques because it, it's just hashtag creative. You can put it in again. Um, so I have Dime software. Okay, Denise, um, I don't know of a way you need to need, if you're a member of the dime Facebook group, then they can teach you they, there's a video to show you how you can import each letter. And um, go join the uh, dime, the dime software Facebook group, and they will they will point you to the video for that because it, they don't have you have to do it differently than you would for um, in brilliance. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm using the two inch font again. I'm gonna make this for, for my daughter for her school papers. And I'm gonna be using the two inch font. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna mark the middle and I'm just gonna use this one on the left for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna go down about mm, three and a half inches that's where i feel like is a good part obviously with these folders you are not going to want to do a monogram down here because if you do you are going to lose that pocket right and so if you have a notebook or something you might be able to try to do that with but with the folders because there's a pocket down there you're not going to want to do it on that bottom corner so i'm going to see if this marker is even going to show up here because of it being blue on blue but so I'm about three and a half and four about there looks good. Yeah. Can you see that? I'm sitting right in front of it. I can't see it. Let me get a, a different uh, marker. Didn't think through that one now, did I? I don't even know what I'm going to be able to see here. Let's see if I have a shot. Okay. You know, you have all these different markers and you think, oh, when am I ever going to use them? And how about now? All right, so there we go. That's much better. All right, so there we have the marking. And I just did one little marking there because I don't need, you know, you can do a line if you want, but I'll show you an easy way that will be helpful to you to be able to line it up really easily. All right, so we've got our Snap Hoop Monster here. We've got the tearaway sticky on here and actually what i'm gonna do yeah i'll just i'm just gonna do the whole thing so there's the paper is off and now i'm gonna take it so that i'm gonna line up i have my pal light here this is my laser let's see if i can get it over here better so it's in the spot that I need it to be all right so now I am lining up I'm using the mat to center the hoop the hoop and I am using the laser based on I'll show you here so let me get these two situated. And now I'm using these lines here to show 
exactly where the hoop is even. But I've done it so many times, I can essentially eyeball it so I know where it is. So I'm just going to use the mat and the laser to be aligned. This laser is from Designs and Machine Embroidery. It's called the PAL 3, and I'll give you a link in a minute. So I'm going to take the folder. And the other way you could do it too is just take the folder and bump it up against the edge here of the hoop. And that way it'll be straight as well. And then I'm going to lay down my hoop on top of it. And there we go. So I'm going to turn that laser off. So what I did is I took the top edge of the folder and I lined it up against the edge of the hoop here, the bottom hoop, and then laid down the magnetic part on top of it. Okay, let me know if there's any questions. I'm going to switch over now to the machine. Let me get you that PAL um, link first, if anybody is interested in that. All right, so now let's go to the machine. I have my design loaded to the machine already, and we're going to stitch the first color. All right, so now if you can see the marking is back here, and so essentially that is not the center of the hoop. So I'm going to adjust where um, the hoop sits. So I'm moving it up a little bit and I'm moving it to the left. So if any of you have this amazing camera, you can also do that and get it set exactly where you want. I'm actually going to move it up a little bit. Okay. There we go. I actually think I'm going to, I marked it. Uh, I'm actually going to move it up a little higher this time. So I'm going to put it up probably about three inches as a center point instead of where it was and scoot it over just a little bit to the left. Okay. So now we are going to start stitching the first color here. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, so we talked about the correct fonts to use, sketch stitch, running stitch, bean stitch, uh, triple bean stitch, floss stitch those are all good ones to use the correct stabilizers tear away with some uh, temporary spray adhesive sticky tear away stabilizer or sticky wash away stabilizer um the other option you can do too is if you don't have a, a, a machine that has the projector like I just showed, you can print out the template, print it out on you know, your home printer from your software, and then lay it on top of your folder to see where it is um, going to stitch and get it the exact placement where you want it to be, okay? One other uh, very, very important point that I didn't mention is that I need to trim that because that's going to drive me crazy. I don't know why it's not trimming. I must have a setting off. But anyway, I will just trim because I'm sitting here with you and hanging out. Um, you must, I, I slow my machine down. So right now I have it, the speed set at 500. So that's one thing to be aware of um, to slow the machine down. 
is helpful to do that. So it's not sewing at full speed. I'm, you probably can, it probably won't be a problem, but I just wanted to slow it down just for my sanity. So I'm not sure. Um, you could try it at full speed and see what happens. Okay, um, the name of the font that I'm using now, Kaylee, is called Good Morning Gorgeous Sketch Font. It is an exclusive creative applique font. I will get you the link here in a second. All right, this little hair, this, uh, thread. All right, so let me get that, grab that link for you. It's a new release. It just came out not too long ago, last week. So that's the embroidery font we're using right now. And it's a three color font. And it is done in a gradient fill. And I'll show you that in a minute here. Okay, so there is font now let's switch back to the table here and i want to show you how this looks so can you see how the top of the letter is more filled in than the bottom of the letter now you could totally just leave it like this and call it good and be done. But one of the things I wanted to do with the sketch font or the gradient fill is to be able to have two or three different colors for sports teams, for schools, for uh, you know logos to match something, you know? And so one of the things that I wanted was to have it be able to be three different colors. So now, as you can see, there, the stitching up here is tighter than it is down here. And that is done on purpose. And that's how you get that gradient fill look. So now I'm gonna change the thread on my machine and we are going to then stitch the other, the second part of the font. So let me know if you have any questions. I thought this would be perfect, you know, for um, like I mentioned, you know, sports teams, if you have some kind of kids sports team or professional football or any kind of professional team that you follow and you want the colors for that, um, I thought that, you know, the ability to use two to three colors for that is awesome. So now we, I have loaded purple here. I hope it shows up well. Um, but I asked my daughter what she wanted and this was it. So I need to figure out why my machine is not. Okay. So Thank you, Lori. I love the new font too. Love the three color idea. Thank you, Joy. I love that. Thank you so much. Love the ombre look. That Yes, Sheila. Thank you. Um, what other gradient fonts do I offer? I Not at this time. I don't offer, I don't have any other gradient fonts. Um, this is the only one, but I'm always open to suggestions and ideas and input and feedback. So if you have fonts that you like this look and it's something that you would love to see more of let me know because i would love to be able to to do that 
This is such a cute font. It, it's a mix of upper and lowercase letters. And, you know, you're like, every font is a mix of upper and lowercase letters. Well, no. The, like the letter R, both of the letter R's look like they're uppercase, but they are different. So they're not two of the same letters, but they look different enough that you can mix and match. And so this, I use all the uppercase letters, but some of them, you know, you, you can use the lowercase letter and an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter, and it just makes it really cute. It's a really cute um, style of, of the font. So Kaylee, I do have other sketch stitch fonts but not ones that are gradient like this with multiple colors. So yeah, if you have if you have suggestions on fonts that you are looking for, you can't find, or you want it done in a specific sketch style send me an email, let me know, and I'll see if I can do it. You know, I obviously have to um, follow the licensing for the fonts from the font creators because I will not create any font that I do not have the license for. Um, to me, that is stealing from another creator. So I don't, um, I won't do that. So if I can get the license for it, uh, I'd be happy to investigate it. So let's go back now to the mat and I want to show you now. So this is now the second color done on top of that. So you can see how you can still see some of the white showing through from up here, but now you can see a whole bunch of the purple, right? Cause the purple is thicker down here and then it goes thinner as it gets to the top. So that's how it allows the, um, the, the depth to be shown. Okay. So now I'm going to load the third color and the third uh, color is going to be the, just an outline. It's going to be a, a bean stitch outline to go around the entire outside of the letter so that is how it's really gonna you know showcase it um so kaylee um this is specifically this one is specifically digitized this way so you know i could you know take one of the fonts i already have and make it a gradient stitch one, but it's not like you can just take the font and divide it up on ones that I already have for sale, if that makes sense. Am I answering your question? I'm not sure if I'm answering your, your question correctly. All right, so now I'm going to start with the third. Uh, whoops, let me switch you over here. All right, so now I'm gonna start with the third, which is the outline of the font. Hey, Joanne, thanks so much for joining me. I'm so glad to see you here. Thank you for popping in. Judy said school is starting soon. She best get her projects done for the great grands. Oh my goodness, great grandchildren, amazing. I think they would love this, yes so much fun it is so much fun to be able to have you know you know how us embroiderers are if it stays still long enough we will try to stitch it so best be careful here right um thank you joanne i appreciate that joanne banco um is a good friend of mine she is a brother uh brand ambassador she's an ambassador for brother machines which i'm using right now and i absolutely love my brother machine and i was on her show back in the end of march i think it was and so her channel is called let's go so with joanne banco so go check out her channel on youtube and you can uh see the interview 
that I did with her. We had a lot of fun just visiting and talking. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. I, you're welcome, uh, Judy. I'm glad I could present the project for you. So I know that um, I only have bought some folders uh, from, from Walmart, but I know that uh, a tester of mine told me that the ones from Target are a little thicker, so you might want to investigate that. And these were bought from Walmart, so I know they're, they're a bit thinner. But and these little snips that I'm using, they're from Fomore Cutlery. I don't know if you guys know Fomore, but he has amazing scissors and he is one of the most amazing persons. He is just so much fun and he has amazing customer service. And if you are looking for some great scissors, he has amazing scissors. If you go to his website, Fomore Cutlery, F-A-M-O-R-E Cutlery, and you use the code Dawn at checkout, I think it's Dawn. Let me see. Oh, creative. It, let me give you the link. If you um, use the code creative at checkout, you will receive a 10% off discount. So, all right, guys, that is it. That was our eight minute sewing project. We got three letters done on a folder here. Let us switch back to the mat. All right. And now you can see we have three colors there. So, how cool is that? Like, I love it because it gives you so much depth and but it's not so filled, like so super dense with so much stitching. And you saw how fast that went, right? Like super fast. All right, so now I'm gonna get my other scissors here. I don't like using my fabric scissors on stuff that is not fabric. How about you guys? So as I mentioned earlier, right now you can see this um, bobbin thread underneath here. So if you want, use a matching embroidery thread to the item you're stitching on, and then that way you can not see the bobbin so much right so i didn't want to do this all this tearing from in the hoop there but this um tears away really easily and so it's not leaving a lot of residue and stuff stuck on the folder itself and i'll have to do a whole bunch of cleanup on this to you know, get rid of some of this other stuff but my little hook here Yes, someone mentioned, and I mentioned it earlier as well, you can buy these hooks in a set at um, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Amazon. I think my, my Amazon store has a link to some of these as well. If you're looking for them, just send me a message. I can get you the link for it. All right, what other questions do you all have? You see how long this took, like 10 minutes maybe from start to finish, if that. Because it takes longer time to create the file in the software than it did to actually like stitch it up. All right, so and I'll need a little bit more cleanup and get my little thread burner tool and burn these tools, but burn these extra threads. But so there you go. We have a cute little folder all ready to go for school and personalized. 
Thank you, Sheila. She says the subtle gradient is nice. Um, Lori said the one that did it. So there is a little bit of buckling. Yes, there's there is going to be a little bit of of buckling, but it's not super bad. And I think over time with weight of books and stuff like that, it's going to flatten out. So I, I think that's just the nature of the beast. Um, but I would, you know, maybe the target ones work better. So I would try that. Um, I'm not sure, Lori, if it, if it caused more buckling than mine did. Uh, so I'm not sure. All right. Um, uh, Joy, I'm so, I'm so glad. I am so glad to hear that you're inspired that, um, that this project is going to be useful. I can't wait for you all to do these and to share them with us. Come share them in the Facebook group, please. Um, you know, so that uh, we can see what you what you uh, are doing. Would you put a wide transparent tape on the underside to prevent wear and tear? So that's a good idea. I was also thinking about that as well. Um, you can do that, but I'm not sure how much wear and tear is going to be. These stitches aren't super wide and most things that are in a folder aren't sharp and um, aren't going to be causing a lot of, you know, pulling and breakage. So, um, but yeah, you could definitely try doing that if you wanted to, that's a great idea. And um, thank you, Eartha, is that how you say it? That's a beautiful name. Wow, I've never seen that before, beautiful. Um, so what type of folders am I using? They're just plastic folders or, you know, like 97 cent folders that you get from Walmart or Target. I'm not sure. Maybe they might even have them at Dollar Tree, but the thicker the plastic is a little better. It's going to be really cute project. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Terry. All right. So any other questions, make sure you get in your hashtag um, creative to enter the giveaway. Just hashtag creative. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I guess nobody else is on Facebook anymore because whatever happened there, I apologize. Uh, so Sheila says there's no give to the material. So since it's plastic, so the manipulation of it will result in some ripples buckling. But if you look, the pink one looks inset dimensional. Yeah. So it, it makes it look like it's, it you know, it's 3D. So the font, you know, being gradient as well also helps with that, with that look. Uh, Marinas, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um... But does this special fill fill type stitch make it perforate less? Yes. So thank you, John, for asking it. Yes, being a sketch type font, it has less stitches, so it's not as dense. The threads are not as close together, so there is some opening in in spaces between the threads. So it's not as tight as a satin stitch would be or a complete fill stitch. And being that it's gradient like this, where the white um, underneath the first one is closer together up here and then it uh, progressively gets uh, further apart and then the purple changes and is tighter down here and gets wider up the top it does have less stitches and less density so um thank you ruth great presentation heading over to your website to get the font thank you so much ruth i appreciate it uh, let me see really quick. Let me scroll up here and see if there's any more questions. Anything monogrammed is wonderful. Yes, I agree. Um, can you talk about burning the threads? Okay, so I have a little tool and I have to see if I can find it really quickly here. Um, I have a little tool that I have to use to burn the threads. Um, you can do it with a lighter. I've done it with a lighter before, but... Uh, let me see. I don't know where my tool is right now. Ah, here it is. Ha ha. Sorry. All right. So it's a little thread burning tool. And I got this off of Amazon. And literally, you take it and 
it's, this one's rechargeable, so it's already charged. But essentially what you do is you press and hold the button down, and this gets super hot. Real, the end of it gets really hot really fast. And so it essentially will just singe the threads. You want to make sure you don't get it too close to the folder because you don't want to put a hole in the folder, right? But essentially, you just take the threads some of these are loose and just hold it to the end of the thread and it burns it off and it singes it. And so when you singe it like that, it actually helps to um, not, un not unravel as easily. So it makes a little hard spot there. All right. So uh, let me see. I know there was another question up here. Um, all right, well, get the, get your hashtag creative in. Okay, so um, Kelly, Kaylee was asking about more gradient fonts. I don't have them at this time. She's asking about Lego house or ladybug love font. Could digitize to be done to be gradient? Yes, Kaylee, I can do that. Um, this is the only gradient font I have on my website at this point in time but I can definitely offer more. If this is something you want to see more of, let me know, you know, send me an email, join the Facebook group. Let me know. Um, what is that tool called Marina? It is a called a thread burner tool. That's what it's called. And so let me give you the link quickly to my Amazon store. Now, when I say my Amazon store, I don't sell these products. They, they're not mine. I don't sell them. I'm not personally shipping these to you. These are items that I have used and tried. I use on a regular basis. They are my go-to items that I um, use when I'm sewing just like you do. And so because I like them, I recommend them to you. So just so it's clear that I'm not selling them to you. They are from another seller. All right. So if there's no other questions, we are going to go do our two giveaways right now. All right, so let me let me um, present the screen, share the screen, do the giveaway, and let us share. And now. For the first one, the winner will receive the new font, the Good Morning Gorgeous Gradient Sketch font. So the first winner will be of the font. Debbie Gilbert, congratulations, Debbie. Send me an email through the website. Go to the Creative Applicates website and send me an email letting me know that you won the uh, Good Morning Gorgeous great, uh, Sketch Gradient font. All right. Congratulations, Debbie Gilbert. And now we, I'm going to draw again for a $20 store credit to my website. And the winner is Jackie Hargett. Congratulations, Jackie. Thank you so much. And so again, go to my website, send me an email letting me know you won the $20 store credit, and I will get that added to your account. So if there's any other questions really quickly, let me know. If not, I'm going to show you a short video. And this is Fun how you can whenever subscribe. Whenever we go live. So here's how to do that. Go to your Facebook page, click on the magnifying glass, and search for Creative Appliques Embroidery. Click on that. Once you're there, make sure you have liked our page and that you have clicked on Follow, and you are following us. Once you are following us, click on the three dots. Click on Follow Settings. Here you can change the settings on how you're notified about when we post and go live. Click on favorites. 
That way you'll see it higher in your newsfeed. On posts, make sure it's set to standard. On video, make sure it's set to all notifications. For live video, make sure it's set to all notifications. Once you've done that, click on update. That way you'll be notified every time we go live and when we post. Also make sure that you're liking and commenting and sharing our posts as well. That way Facebook will continue to share them with you. All right, everybody, I wanna thank you so much for uh, allowing me to share with you a fun project. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy life and your busy schedules to join me. I greatly appreciate it. This video will be available on the, my YouTube channel, so it'll be there so you can go back and rewatch it. If you have any questions, let me know. And let me know if there's other videos you would like me to do, you would like to see. And so I'm going to sign off and wish you all a great day, a great weekend. And until next time, make your life creative. Bye for now.